trending on Twitter today is this conversation between Eric Weinstein and Joe Rogan in which Joe Rogan basically says, I can't really find myself to voting for Biden over Trump because Biden's not up to the task. And listen, this is what I've been talking about for a while. Just from my perspective, I was really hoping that the Democrats would serve me up a nice, moderate, capable candidate with all the 50,000 options that they had and they didn't get it done. So as of right now, the candidates are Donald Trump and Joe Biden, and I cannot find myself to rationalizing voting for Joe Biden based on what I've seen, because I think he's clearly sunsetting. I think he's sunsetting, or he has dementia, he might have full-on dementia, who knows, but there's absolutely something wrong. He is not in full control of his mental faculties, and I've been talking about this for a while. I actually first noticed this when I was still a Democrat and I still had Trump derangement syndrome, folks. Maybe not full on Trump derangement syndrome. I kind of started, it had started cracking around that point. But I saw Joe Biden for the first time in person in New Hampshire in, uh, in this election cycle in September at the Democratic State National Convention in New Hampshire. And I got to tell you, my, I've actually looked back at my notes recently and my thoughts for seeing him on that day were he's slurring his words. He's not making sense. What the what is going on with Joe Biden? And Democrats, if they're being honest with you, and they probably won't be honest with you if you're like a Trump supporter, but if they're being honest with you, they've been having these conversations with month, for months, for months. This is not even a new conversation. Any single Democrat, they're a liberal or progressive or anyone that I talk to had, was having the conversation about like, there's something wrong with Joe Biden. It's been going on for months, but they want to deny it now because he's their obvious nominee and they're trying to find a way to rationalize voting for him. And we're getting instances like these, like this article in Politico, 2020 becomes the dementia campaign. Come on, man. What they're saying is that Biden may have dementia, but Trump's got it too. I'm sorry. I don't buy it. Not for one single second. I'm going to talk about why in this video that I think that Biden's mental faculties and to question them is a, you can make a far stronger case for it than questioning Trump's mental faculties. And I'm gonna, we're going to talk about that in this video. But first off, before we get into that, listen, there are two quick things I want you to know. Number one, I was looking at the stats recently on YouTube and I discovered that about 87% of you who are watching this video right now are not subscribed to this channel. Now this makes sense. This is a relatively new thing for me. I'm kind of just messing around and having fun. But if you want to be notified when I post new content, go ahead, subscribe, hit those notifications. You can also give it a thumbs up, share it out with your friends. All that stuff would really help me out and I'm very much appreciative of it. But the other thing I noticed is this. I just happened to be earlier this week, like looking at my real time subscriber data on YouTube. And as I was looking at it, it dropped like 30 people literally right in front of my eyes. Now, my channel is not big enough to have 30 people unsubscribe all at the same time, I don't think. And so that struck me as a bit odd. So if you think you're subscribed to this channel, go ahead and just double check that for me. Just just to make sure just to be on the safe side. All right, let's read this article from Politico. The two most like the two people most likely to control the US nuclear arsenal and with it its nuclear its capacity to blow up civilization through January 2025 are both well into their 70s and facing pervasive public speculation that they are becoming senile. Now, I want to point out this article is about a month old. So it's a little older. It was posted really as this whole crisis was kind of like ramping up. And I want to I want to be upfront about that. But I also want to talk about this this idea that there's pervasive public speculation that Trump is senile. No, there's not. There absolutely is not. There are some articles about Trump having dementia, like this one from USA Today that came out in April or this one from uh, from The Atlantic that came out two years ago. There's also this article from lawsuit.org that basically has like a cal like calculus. Um, I guess I, I don't see a date that this came out, but I don't think that this is a recent thing either. There's some talk out there, but it isn't recent. Not, and not especially since Trump has started doing these daily press briefings. Keep that in mind. Like really ask yourself if this article that we are about to read is going to give recent examples to prove this pervasive public speculation that Trump is becoming senile. 
Just listen to Tucker Carlson on Wednesday night, the big day after Joe Biden's big Super Tuesday victory and the victory speech in which he was momentarily confused over which side of the podium his wife and sister were standing. As a smart friend said last night, Biden has spent his entire life trying to succeed in presidential politics. And now he has. Too bad he's not there to enjoy it. Pretty funny. Listen, I don't agree with Tucker on this one that it's pretty funny. I think this is incredibly sad. And I think a lot of Republicans and Trump supporters that I've talked to in the last several weeks, they all think it's sad too. I don't think that people see this as a funny thing. I think they're seeing what's going on with Biden and they're saying, oh my God, I watched that happen to my mother or my grandmother or my my brother or a family member or a loved one. And it's incredibly sad. I think that's what it is. 2020 is suddenly becoming the dementia campaign, according to Politico. President Donald Trump's own public blunder saying his father was born in Germany when it was really his grandfather and referring to Apple CEO Tim Cook as Tim Apple have prompted commentary throughout his term questioning whether his cognitive faculties are deteriorating. Come on, man. Come on. Biden has made gaffes literally his entire career. He's, he's misspoken. He's been a little bit confused about things. He said things that are silly. Trump is doing the same thing. And I find it very, very telling that they have to go back to these particular gaffes, which are not recent, as examples of Trump's obvious cognitive decline. When we can look at things from Biden and see it right now with our naked eye, what is going on. So here are just here's some videos. You can watch them on your own time if you want. Tr uh, Biden trying to quote the Declaration of Independence and forgetting it halfway through, literally. And you can see this happen with Biden all the time, where his mind goes blank mid-sentence and he forgets what he was going to say. Or Biden calling Super Tuesday Super Thursday. Now, Super Tuesday was pretty important to Biden. You would think he'd know what day it would be. You know, he's also been in politics since 1972. So you would, you would think he would know Super Tuesday by now. Or... Biden saying he was running for Senate instead of running for president or Biden calling Chris Wallace the wrong name. You think he doesn't know what Chris Wallace's name is or Biden forgetting what state he was in, North South Carolina, or Biden randomly trying to nibble his wife's finger as she's giving a speech. It's a little weird, maybe not dementia related, just a little weird. Um, you know, we can also see cl clips of Biden just saying, I mean, generally cantankerous things, getting in fights with people that are coming to his rally. Did you see a couple weeks ago, he got in a fight with like a union auto worker at one of his events because the dude asked him a question. Or what about this one? This happened just the other day, literally. Biden forgot how many grandchildren he has. Dude has seven grandchildren. He said he had five. He forgot how many grandchildren he has. Now, I know that when my grandmother was sunsetting, she forgot my name too. She also didn't know what year it was. And... I wouldn't have voted for her to be president of the United States. I'm sorry. I loved my grandmother dearly, but she's not getting my vote for president. I don't know. I just don't know how people can ignore this stuff. I really don't. Now that the 77-year-old Biden is the Democratic frontrunner over the 78-year-old Bernie Sanders to take on the 73-year-old Trump, questions about age-related infirmity are taking on a new volume and centrality. The debate reflects the rancorous, attack-oriented character of modern political culture, genuine concerns about the ca uh, capabilities of people who want the world's most powerful job mingle bizarrely with insults, jokes, and self-confident pronouncements from people with no evident qualifications to be speculating publicly about other people's neurological health. I don't think reporters for places like Politico necessarily have qualifications to do that. I have a PhD in psychology. I'm going to say what I want. But listen, I'm also going to be intellectually honest here because I want to hold myself to higher standards than the media holds themselves to. Yes, my PhD is in psychology. It is in general psychology. However, my focus, my specialization was industrial organizational psychology. So psychology of the workplace, psychology of business, things like that. So in regards to, to areas outside of that specialization, my knowledge is a mile wide and an inch deep. So do I have the best qualifications to be speculating about this? No. Do I know more than the average bear? Yes. So, you know, take that for what you will. You decide if I'm more credible, credible than like a journalist for Politico. Whatever. 
As highlighted by Carlson's comments, one example among many from commentators in recent days, a subject that is that in a previous era would be no way a laughing matter is being treated in this era in many ways as a laughing matter. No one's treating this as a laughing matter. Honestly, I haven't heard, I mean, Tucker Carlson's comments aside, and again, I don't agree with that, but most of the people I've talked to are not treating this as something funny. They're treating it as something that's sad. Trump seemingly indifferent to the glass house's maxim in recent days has upped the ante in what is becoming a senility sweepstakes. So they're basically saying Trump really shouldn't be talking about this because he makes his own gaffes. On Monday, he said if Biden is elected, they're going to put him in a home and other people are going to be running the country. Yo, this is an article, or an, uh, not an article, an argument that I've heard from so many of my Democratic friends. The argument is, well, it doesn't matter if Biden has dementia because he's going to appoint a highly qualified cabinet of people that are going to run the country for him. I'm sorry. Like, if that's the best you got, that you're going to vote for the guy who has dementia because he's not really going to be running the country? Are you listening to yourselves right now? Are you listening to yourselves? Listen, like, hate Trump, fine. Hate everything Trump stands for, fine. Trump doesn't have dementia. Trump is in control of his mental faculties. You might not appreciate how he uses those mental faculties, but you want to literally put someone in the position of being able to launch nuclear weapons that is not fully in control of his mental faculties? No. No, thank you. No, 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 no. Vice presidents or cabinet members do not run organizations. Leaders, presidents, CEOs, they run organizations. They make decisions. We need someone in that chair who's going to be able to make decisions. At a town hall on Fox on Thursday, Trump cited verbal examples by Biden and asserted there's something going on there. Friday morning on Twitter, he said Biden would destroy Medicare and Social Security and not even know he's doing it. I don't necessarily agree with that either, but whatever. Concerns about, okay, now they're going to go into some history that has nothing to do with this article because these places like to put so much filler in these articles that has absolutely nothing to do with the subject at hand. In the cases of Biden and Trump, as their public appearances often vary widely in Christmas and command of detail, the reporter or operative conversation increasingly sounds something like the way family members discuss an elderly relative trying to distinguish normal aging from something more troubling. No, I'm sorry. I have seen Biden in person several times. I've seen Trump in person. There is no comparison between the two of who is more in control of their faculties. They are not the same thing. And if you don't, don't take my word for it, man. Don't take my word for it. Go watch. Go watch clips of rallies on YouTube. Or when all this is over, go to a rally. Go see them in person. If you can, go, go, go. If you, if you like Biden, man, go to a Trump rally. If you like Biden, or if you like Trump, go to a Biden rally. See them in person. Listen to them speak. It is a completely different experience. Even in his early days in the Senate, where he arrived at 30 in 1972, Biden was known for, I don't know what that word is, and sometimes discursive style. In the context of a presidential campaign, however, this can raise eyebrows. Biden has always raised eyebrows. <laughs> Biden's gaffes are one of the most endearing things about him. It's just that now they've crossed the line into being um, crazy. All right. And this is, okay, so what this paragraph is right here, this is basically them saying Biden had a really forceful, powerful performance in the debate. Listen, man, I'm not going to say that Biden never has good performances. He does. He does. But that, but have you, like, look at what's happened recently. Like, this has happened since he's been home and hasn't been able to be campaigning. Watch the interviews he's done recently. The dude can't hold a coherent thought. He really can't. I was watching an interview the other day where he literally looked like he was going to cry by the end of the interview. I can only imagine that that was happening because he was feeling like frustrated because he wasn't making sense in the interview. He literally looked like he was going to cry by the end of it. Trump's partisans eager to exploit Biden's cantankerous, or circuitous, excuse me, circuitous words may wish first to review the large anthology of Trump classics. And the only reason that they are pointing to the classics, Trump's classic gaffes, stupid things Trump has said, 
is because they can't point to recent things. Trump is on TV for like two hours a day. Two hours a day. Speaking, taking questions. If, if Trump really had dementia, if he was really senile, point to something recent. Point to any single thing from any of the daily press briefings that he's done. And here's the thing. There is a difference between not liking what Trump says and, and it being a result of senility. Okay? You cannot like what he says. You can loathe every idea that he has. You can, you know, really, I mean, hate him as a human being. Whatever. If any of those things are true, that does not make him senile. That, that like, one, one does not lead to the other. You can hate him and he can still be of sound mind. These include the president's remarks to the National Republican Campaign Committee last April, where he free associated about Democratic's promotion of alternative energy. <laughs> and this is, dude, this is where they spend literally three paragraphs talking about the stupid, boneheaded remarks that Trump made about windmills. Now, I'm not going to defend those remarks. I'm not. I think that was stupid. That was stupid, man. Like, Trump, you missed the ball on that one, okay? You don't win me over and that windmills cause cancer. That was dumb. But, again, someone saying something dumb is not evidence of senility. We can, again, listen, I know I'm beating a dead horse here. Example after example after example after example. Recent examples of Biden saying crazy things. It's just insane. And actually, if you look at look at this lawsuit.org article, like in order to prove that Trump has dementia, they like have advanced calculations and calculus about Trump's speech patterns and the words he's saying a minute and how he's saying them. Listen, man, with Biden, you can see all this stuff. You don't need to do calculus or, or any sort of advanced stat, uh, statistics to be able to prove that there's something wrong with Joe Biden. Uh, keeps going here. Listen, I'll link this article in the description below if you want to read it. But I just want to get down to, to this last point. It's basically like, in Trump's case, he has often gotten lost rhetorically in precisely the same way for which he mocks Biden. And by the way, the other thing about this article, they don't actually give any of the Biden examples. They really don't. They talk about Trump's mocking Biden for this and Trump's mocking Biden for that. They don't give any examples that are real examples that average people are bringing up to say Joe Biden is like, it's not quite right, man. Not quite right. He once referred to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as Netanyahu. In December, more than 700 psychiatrists and other mental health professionals submitted a petition to Congress during the impeachment inquiry, warning that President Donald Trump's mental health was rapidly deteriorating. And yeah, I mean, listen, during impeachment, Trump was acting crazy. He was acting crazy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna concede that from my perspective. However, I believe that he was acting crazy because of stress. I do not believe he was acting crazy because of senility. Listen, we now know that during impeachment, coronavirus was starting to heat up. It was starting to become something they were focused on. Trump formed the coronavirus task force during impeachment while he was being impeached. And God knows what other things were going on at that time. We don't know. Stress causes people to do weird things. Stress causes people to act crazy. So was Trump acting crazy and like on Twitter all day when, when during the impeachment stuff? Yeah, he was. Yes. Concede that, Trump supporters. Concede it. Because it's not because he's senile, it's not because he has dementia, it's just he was acting a little extra Trumpian. Whatever. Um, let's see. MSNBC commentator Joe Scarborough, who has known Trump for years, said comments that the president made speculating if Andrew Jackson had come later, he might have prevented the Civil War, reminded Joe Scarborough of his mother's struggles with dementia. Come on, Joe Scarborough. Joe Scarborough is someone that I see that has just like a little bit of intellectual honesty left, and I don't think that's intellectually honest. Accusations that politicians may be drifting towards non compos mentis, I don't know Latin, typically can't be divorced from political differences that don't concern age. Glenn Greenwald, co-founder of The Intercept and who is backing Sanders, said the steadfast, willful refusal of democratic political and media elites to address what is increasingly visible to the naked eye Biden's serious cognitive decline is frightening indeed. 
not only for what it portends in 2020, but for what it says about the ease of snapping them into line. He was responding to one of his reporters who said Biden is sundowning. I 100% agree with Glenn Greenwald. 100%. Listen, we can see this. We can see that. Watch this. I mean, again, don't take my word for it. Just watch Biden and watch Trump's daily press briefings and tell me which one you think has it more together. And be honest. Be honest. And I can accept if you don't give me the answer that I would agree with, but have some sort of rationalization for it that's not orange man bad. I don't like what Trump is saying. I don't like how he's talking to that reporter. Trump can say uppity things and not be senile. Biden can say uppity things and not be seen on a Heck, maybe Biden really did just want to get into a fight with a Detroit auto worker, or maybe he really did just want to call that one guy fat at his rally and, and challenge him to a push-up contest. I can accept those things. I can't accept him forgetting how many grandkids he has, or confusing his wife and his sister, or forgetting the names of people he's known for years, or forgetting what day Super Tuesday is on, or forgetting that he's running for president and not the Senate. I can't, I can't rationalize those things. I can't. Matt Stoller, another voice on the left, and a Sanders backer said on Twitter, Democratic insiders know Biden has cognitive decline issues. They joke about it. They don't care. They don't care. And that's really, that's really what it is at the end of the day, isn't it? They selected Biden to be their nominee because they don't care if he's up to the job. All they care about is beating Donald Trump. That's it. That's all they care about. And they decided that Biden is the most viable candidate to do that. It is absolutely sad. Listen, the election, the process of campaigning, that is what is supposed to weed out candidates who are not up to the job. That is what is supposed to happen. Like, we don't have co a test for cognitive ability for people running for president because the voters are supposed to be there to say, this person is not fit. That hasn't happened in this case. Now, I think that Trump was going to wipe the floor with whoever the nominee was, so maybe this will ultimately end up being a moot point, but it's still really sad to me that people are putting Biden through this, and it's also really sad that people who are voting for him don't even seem to care.